What's up guys, this is Mario from uh, Trader Today and in today's video I'm going to go over a recap of what the market has been doing, uh, the current market environment, uh, what is trending, what sectors are moving the market, what's lagging behind, and what to look for in the next couple weeks. Alright guys, so let's get started. So as you guys can see, the market has been uh, trending this week. There was a really nice rally um, after the uh, Federal Reserve met. Uh, after the jobs report, or, uh, jobs uh, report uh, on Friday of last week, and uh, the recent, um, I guess, uh, earnings also coupled with the um, peace within North Korea and South Korea, so good geopolitical news and good uh, job numbers that do not uh, reflect that there's going to be any uh, runaway inflation. I guess where again the Federal Reserve has to increase interest rates higher than normal. And as long as uh, the numbers look clean in terms of nothing out of the ordinary, the market is going to continue to like it and continue to move. So, so far, so good. I'm liking this little rally. Uh, I did take an opportunity on those uh, on that rally. I did make some money on Facebook, Baba. Um, I do have other, other uh, you know, ETFs and stocks that I'm, already, I'm also trading. But overall, I liked it. So, what moved the market this week? So, uh, definitely technology. Technology definitely uh, leading the way. Again, as a reminder, guys, uh, technology is the biggest sector in the stock market in the S and P 500. Therefore, if the techno technology moves, it's going to move the market. And in terms of what stocks were, were moving the market, definitely the Fangs, specifically Apple and Facebook. So Apple had this huge move after his earnings, just humongous move uh, this week, which was pretty awesome, pretty amazing. A lot of it had to do with just their their uh, record-breaking, uh, you know, earnings report. Uh, again, there was a lot of fears that the whole, you know, iPhone 10 did not sell enough sales, did not, you know, not gonna sell enough units as predicted but actually not only did it sell enough it sold more than expected more than analysts are expected so it's really good uh apple just continues to amaze uh investors and continues to uh, you know shatter all the doubts of people you know quarter after quarter um and then also you know warren buffett who has a humongous stake in apple i think is the third biggest shareholder of apple did mention that uh, you know, they bought more uh, more shares uh, in, in the second quarter of this year. So that, you know, because there's, there's a huge following. There's a lot of traders and investors who follow what Warren Buffett trades or invests in. Actually, Warren Buffett does not trade. He invests. So that just kind of coupled with that, and it just made the whole uh, market move. Because, again, Apple is the biggest position in the S&P 500. It's 3%. So when Apple moves, it's definitely, uh, it's kind of like leader of the market right now. So the next thing, uh, of course, Facebook. If you guys can see that, um, you know, after the whole uh, debacle with, uh, you know, the privacy issues with uh, the, the um, Brit Britannica or British Analytica, you know, <laughs> uh, where, the, you know, they stole the information or they use information for, you know, I guess you could say, uh, political purposes and all that kind of stuff and he you know uh, what's his name uh, Mark Zuckerberg had to go to Congress and you know they got to testify and answer questions to the lawmakers so after that uh, and the earnings show that there was really no fact uh, they're still being very, very profitable and they actually beat earnings for sure uh, you know it looks like there's no reason why to be in those levels so a lot of people bought those dips and it literally just came back so I made actually some pretty decent money in this move. So that is really good. I mean, but not just, you know, Facebook in terms of the fangs. Um, you have uh, uh, Netflix. Uh, actually, uh, let's, let's go to the fangs. We already showed Facebook. I already showed Apple. Let's look at Amazon. Amazon still holding highs. Had a really nice earnings report. Broke to all-time highs. Pulled back a little bit, but it's, still, it's holding its levels. Um, and then we have uh, Netflix. Netflix is still going. You know, again, earnings broke out, uh, hit some resistance, pulled back, but it's still holding. And then we have Google. Google is actually probably the uh, the uh, fang that's kind of uh, lagging the most, uh, but it's starting to break out, starting to make higher highs. It's, it's holding this, these levels, these higher lows, so that's really, really good, and that's very, very important. So things are looking good. You know, things are looking good. 
Um, the next sector, which is the biggest sector in the S&P 500, that's actually the uh, 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 financials. So financials is uh, something that we are all looking at myself, you know, because it does represent a big a stick in the S&P 500. So it's the biggest sector. So it, it is trending. It just it trended all, all this week. So that's really good. That's really nice. So, so far, things are looking good, guys. Um, one other thing that I want to mention is energy. Energy just came out of nowhere. And I did have a, a, um, a video to talk about energy and oil and how it could definitely, has definitely helped the market at all. Because energy was definitely lagging way behind every single sector. Uh, when there was a nasty sell-off in, in, in February, um, energy didn't bounce. Literally didn't do anything. So pretty much all month of February and March is literally just stayed range bound, which is really weird. You know, you really look at oil. Oil was trending the whole time. You know, even during that sell-off, it was trending. But energy, which again, energy and oil, they really almost they correlate very good. Uh, you know, the energy just, just kind of pretty much just lagged. So there was a definitely great opportunity for those who understood that those fundamentals of, of oil and then knew that eventually energy prices were going to catch up to what's happening in the oil markets. Those guys banked. You know, and and uh, and I have to say, I was in one of those traders. So, uh, you know, and and I kind of knew that already too myself. I mean, I saw the oil trending, but energy just lagging. Uh, but I just couldn't uh, put myself to, to pull the trigger, and I should have because it literally it just ripped. Uh, and we were also we we're almost at uh at at one time in at 52 week high. So, uh, you know, that's pretty awesome. You know how this works. So, you know, fundamentals drive the prices, you know, and something that takes a while for the market to realize what's happening and then it, and then it follow, follow suit. But just keep that in mind, guys. You know, sometimes fundamentals take a while for it to reflect in, in stock prices. That's normal. Um, and that happens, you know, and, and that happens. I mean, uh, energy sector is a great example of how the, the oil, oil was just literally training, ripping, doing its thing. And energy, you know, look, this is a, a one-year shard of oil. It's literally been trending for almost a year. Like a smooth trend, is, you know. And then you have energy. You know, it, it kind of got excited, you know, the first uh, first quarter of first month. And it literally sell off with the whole market, actually, after the, you know, the sell-off. But then it just literally didn't do anything for like two months, which is really weird, very odd, because, again, oil was trendy. Uh, so that's definitely uh, what they called, uh, you know, there's, there's a term for it. Um, there's market divergence, I guess you could say, or sector divergence, uh, you know, because, you know, <laughs> it didn't make sense, to be honest. Because, again, oil prices reflect in the bottom line of energy companies. When gold, oil goes up, the profitability of energy companies go up. You know, there's a lot of companies in the United States that when oil hits uh, fifty dollars a barrel or more, they actually are they break even at fifty dollars a barrel or more. Anything above that, they're already making money and they're profitable. So that's pretty much what happened. And, and now, so we have now uh, oil is pretty much priced at right like like seventy bucks uh, a barrel. So actually, let me let me look at that. What is what is oil trading at right now? And it should be here. Futures, so yeah, oil futures. Uh, so we got, let me see, see, here it is. Crude oil and crude oil Brent. So right now, crude oil WTI, West Texas Intermediate, is $70 a barrel. Crude oil Brent, $77.18. So it's way above, you know, the, the, uh, the uh, $70 a barrel. So... Uh, definitely a lot of these energy companies are profitable and you have companies like Exxon Mobil who understands the market. They're going to take advantage of um, and hopefully it, oil, uh, gas prices don't go to $5 a gallon, which did happen uh, around 2007, 2008, which uh, definitely was very inflationary. So that is something that you know, the Federal Reserve is also looking because when oil prices go up, because oil is one of the biggest things when it comes to inflation. If oil prices go up higher than normal, that's inflationary. Because there's a lot of products and services are, or mostly products made out of oil. 
So if that costs more, it's gonna. And not only that, keep in mind transportation. You know, uh, you know, and that's a huge thing because transportation, like companies like UPS, FedEx, uh, even uh, airlines. You know, um, they, they need oil I and mean, they have to spend a lot of money and energy costs that can lower their bottom line. So again, that is inflationary, or they have to raise prices. So that's gonna affect uh, consumers. So guys, hopefully uh, you guys liked the video. You guys learned something from this video. Again, um, market is doing pretty good. I'm, I'm liking what happened. The 200-day uh, moving average uh, did hold, so I'm very, very happy about that. And um, and actually, I wanted to show you that really quickly, so you guys could see it. Uh, let me show that to you guys really quickly. So, all right. So you see that the 200-day moving average did hold very nicely. So again, we had a bounce here, second bounce, third bounce, and held higher low, and literally trending now again. So hopefully this trend continues, and we get we get to test uh, the 280, and then we get to test the all-time highs at 286 level, 285 level. So, all right, guys. So hopefully you guys learned something from this video. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me, and you guys will hear from me soon. Have a good one, guys.